Hello, my name is Yvonne Doyle. I'm a former professional tennis player and I'm a former captain of the Irish Fed Cup team. I'm also a tennis coach and a yoga and meditation teacher. I've put together this little practice of yoga poses. There's a lot of tennis players all over the world at home, unable to go out and do their regular training and practices. So this is a nice little way to change up your training. And, you know, you probably have heard the benefits of yoga for the body. It really helps improve your flexibility and it can also improve your strength. So the aim of yoga, one of the aims is to help you feel more connected to your body. So when you're doing the poses, really try and focus on the sensations in your body, what, where you're feeling it in the muscles. Um, and if at any stage it feels like the pose is too much, then back off a little bit. And if it's too much still, then just come out of the pose. It's important that you listen to your body just to keep it, keep it safe. Also, I'll be giving you instructions on the correct alignment for the poses. And this is really to help you do the pose as correctly as you can, but also to keep your body safe. So you will need a space, a small space so where your body can fit, um, a yoga mat if you have one, otherwise, you know, on a rug or um, a carpeted floor. And we will need like a strap. I have what we call a yoga strap, but you may have a scarf or a belt, something um, something of that nature. And also you might need a little prop. Uh, I have two yoga blocks that we're going to use in the practice, but you could possibly, um, if you don't have yoga blocks at home, then use two uh, big hardback books. So we'll get started. We'll begin on your mat, on your hands and knees. We're going to begin on all fours. So you're going to take your hands beneath your shoulders, spread the fingers in both hands, place them under the shoulders and take the knees underneath the hips. And we'll come into what we call the cat cow. So you're going to breathe in, allow the tummy to lower down towards the floor. You lift your tailbone and you bring your chest forward. And as you exhale, you're going to round the back, round the spine and push into the floor with your hands. And then breathe in again. We lower the tummy down. So we're just trying to mobilize along the spine. Exhaling, we round the back. And one more, inhaling. We're opening the front of the body here and then exhaling rounding the back up again on your inhale you bring the body the back back to neutral and we're going to walk the hands slightly ahead of the shoulders here you're going to curl the toes under and we're coming into what we call our downward dog so you're lifting your knees up now here before you go to work towards straightening the legs we're going to shift the chest back towards the top of the thighs so we're looking for a nice long length in the back, in the spine. Now we can lower one heel down, keep the other heel lifted and then change over. So you might start to feel this in the back of the calves. Just alternating with the feet. At any stage, if you need to come out of the pose, just lower back down onto the knees. Now, see, can you just allow the heels to settle? And see, can you move the tops of the thighs back? So don't be too concerned if your heels don't reach the floor. And then we'll bring the knees onto the floor here. So take your right foot, place it up onto, into that space in between the hands. You're going to remain on the knee of the left leg. And for a moment here, we'll walk the hands up onto the right knee. So we just want to check here that the right knee stays above the right ankle. So if you feel you can go a little bit deeper into the pose, maybe scoot that front foot forward a little bit. 
So we're coming into the front of the left hip flexor at the front of the hip here. So with all yoga poses, once you're holding them, you gotta remember to breathe. And then we'll release the hands. This time you're gonna take the hands either side of that front foot. See, can you lift the back knee? Can you lift the chest a little bit higher? So maybe come up onto the fingertips if it works. So with the back knee lifted, the left knee lifted, see, can you work towards straightening that left leg? And then exhale, lower that left knee. Now here's the part where we might need to use those books. So you're gonna place the, block, the books or the blocks either side of that front foot. So breathe in, you're gonna open the chest, you're in your low lunge. And then as you breathe out, you're gonna to start to shift the hips back towards the back heel. And you're gonna to work towards towards straightening that front leg. You lift the toes and that right foot up towards the ceiling. Keep the spine nice and long, so you don't wanna be rounding here. So inhale, we'll come forward again. So the foot, the right foot flattens down on the floor, maybe even walking the hands forwards a bit, coming into your low lunge. And exhale, we'll shift back into what we call half splits. So keep the spine long and then maybe folding down over that front leg. Continue to breathe here. And then inhale, coming up. So you can place the blocks down for a moment. Take your hands either side of that front foot. You lift the back knee. And we're gonna step that right foot back to downward facing dog. Remember to lengthen through the spine first, then you work towards the legs, straightening out the legs. And then let's step the left foot forward. In between the hands, we lower the right knee down. So just coming into our lunge here, you can walk your hands up. So just remember the left knee above the left ankle, and then just sinking into that low lunge a little more if you can. So we're feeling it at the front of the right hip now, the right hip flexor. And then we release the hands, take them onto the floor, and we're gonna take the blocks if you need to. This time I'll do it without the blocks. We can come onto the fingertips if you're flexible enough. Breathe in, inhale, bring the chest forwards, and exhale, shifting the hips back towards the back heel, looking to open up into that front leg. We'll go with the breath here, inhale, come into the low lunge again, chest lifted, exhale, back into half split. So here, lifting the left toes, the toes of the left foot up towards the ceiling and breathing here. And inhale, come forwards again. Take your hands either side of that front foot, lift the left, sorry, the right knee, and we step the left foot back. Downward facing dog again. So really working to get into the calves here, into the back of the legs. And then we lower the knees down onto the floor. So another one for the groin we're gonna try is frog pose. So here, you're gonna take the knees out wide. You're gonna bring your big toes together. So bring the knees out as wide as you can. Big toes are together. And then you're gonna just start to lower down onto the floor. So maybe onto the hands first, then onto the forearms and the elbows. And then maybe so you're sinking your hips back here towards the heels, or sorry, I should say your sit bones. So these are the bones in your bum. You're bringing them back towards your heels. So this is frog pose. We're getting into the groin again. So if you feel in, the, in this position, you can't feel anything. If you don't feel any sort of a stretch, just make sure that you 
have your knees as wide apart as they can go. So we'll stay here in frog pose for a few breaths. Good, and then we'll come back up. So just ease your way back in to bring the knees back together. So a nice one here now for the chest and the arms, the front of the shoulders. So you're gonna keep your, you're still on your knees, your hips are above your knees. You're gonna walk the hands, big steps forward with the hands, and then just keep the hips high. Just begin to allow the chest to melt down towards the floor. So just easing your way down. Keep the hands active here. So press the hands into the floor. And then we'll walk the hands back. Again, coming into all fours. You're going to have your left hand on the floor. You're going to take your right hand, the back of the right hand, and you're going to thread it under the left arm all the way through. And then your shoulder, your right shoulder, starts to want to come down towards the floor. So allow it. You can bend your left elbow to help you, support you as you're lowering down. So you can you place the side of your head on the floor and you can prop yourself up here with your fingertips on the left hand. So this is just a nice twist for the body. And now we press that left hand into the floor to help you back up to all fours. I'm going to twist around. So we'll go the other hand. So the other hand, the back of the opposite hand slides under. And then you come down onto the side of the shoulder, the side of the head. Prop yourself up on the fingertips of the other hand. So you keep the hips high here. This is called thread the needle pose. And here we're looking for the twist in the body at the mid to upper back. And then place the right hand on the floor, pressing in and bringing yourself back up. So we'll come to standing up on the mat here. We come into what we call mountain poses. This is just all about posture here. You bring your big toes together. Now here, we want to lift our kneecaps in our quad muscles. So make the quads really activated, nice and strong legs. Engage your lower abdominals and then draw the shoulders up towards the ears and back down the back. Now some energy into the arms here. So just keeping the chest open. And then as you breathe in, bring your arms up overhead. And now you're gonna take hold of the left wrist with the right hand. And as you exhale, you're gonna to lean to your right. So we're gonna stay here for a few breaths. Now see, can you glue your feet down into the mat, down into the floor? And we're looking for a lengthening all across the left side of the body. You can maybe take your gaze to look at your upper arm if it feels okay on the neck. And then on your next inhale, bring yourself back up to standing. We're going to switch over. So take a hold of the right wrist with the left hand, still sitting, standing up tall. Keep the legs strong. On your next exhale, you're going to lean to your left. And then again, turning the head if it feels, if there's no issues with the neck or around the shoulders. On your next inhale, bring yourself back up to standing and exhale, big wide opening of the arms out to the side and then bringing them down. So let's step the feet out wide and you're gonna turn the right foot towards the right towards the top of the mat. The left foot is turned in slightly. On an inhale, we'll bring the arms up to shoulder height. So really stretch out through the fingertips here. As you exhale, you're going to bend that right knee. So you might have seen this pose, warrior two. Here, the alignment, we want to be careful that knee just stays above the right ankle. 
and see can you track that knee somewhat towards the little toe side of the right foot. And then we're going to flip the right hand up towards the ceiling on your next inhale. Keep your leg as it is. Reach for the left leg with the left hand and bring the right arm up towards the ceiling. You might feel a lengthening here on the right side of the body. And then exhale, bring the arms back. Inhale, straighten the front leg and lower the hands down on the exhale. Let's repeat that on the other side. So it's the left foot forward, the right foot is turned in. Inhale, we'll take the arms up. Exhale, bend the left leg. So again, keep the left knee above the left ankle. So if you find you're in this kind of position where it's, a, it's beyond the ankle, then scoot the back foot back a bit more so you can get the alignment right. So this is warrior two here. And then we flip that left hand up towards the ceiling. Keep your left leg as it is. On your next inhale, just we're going to reach for the right leg with the right hand and bring that left arm up. So both the legs are working strong. And then exhale back to warrior two. Inhale, left leg straightens. Exhale, we'll release the hands. So we'll heel toe the feet back towards each other and coming into a nice balance pose here. So we wanna stretch out the quad muscles. So you're gonna balance on the left leg to begin with and you're gonna take your right foot, take the right heel in towards your right glute. And you're just drawing it in there. And to feel the stretch a little bit more up higher on the quad or in the hip flexor, see, can you imagine your tailbone moving downwards towards the floor? And here, if you need to, you hold on to a wall or something just to help with the support of the balance. The more you practice the balance poses, the better you get at it. And then we'll release that leg and we'll go the other side. So drawing that left heel in towards your left glute. And then releasing down. So now you possibly know, or maybe you've had a shoulder injury before, it's important to keep the shoulders really supple if you're a tennis player. So this is where we're going to use the strap. This is one of the places where we're going to use the strap. So you're going to take the strap, place it around your right shoulder. You're going to take your left arm out to the side, palm of the hand facing away from you. And you're going to bend your elbow and take that left hand behind you. So you're going to work that left hand up your back as best as you can go. So you can even help it with the right hand. Then we're going to lift the right arm up towards the ceiling and then bend that right elbow and see, can you make a connection with the hands? So if they can touch, hold on there with the fingers. If not, you take a hold of the strap, grab it in the right hand and just guide it into the left hand. And then here, we want to pull the strap apart. It's like you want to pull the hands away from each other. And then releasing there, we're going to change over to the other side. So we're going to take the right arm behind, palm of the hand facing away from you, bend the elbow, work that right hand up the back. Lift the left arm up towards the ceiling and then taking it bending the left elbow and taking the hand back behind you. So again, holding on with the fingers, if you can make a connection between the fingers, otherwise take a hold of the strap. Pay attention to the sensations in your body as you practice the pose. And then releasing down. You can place the strap over to the side for a moment and then we're going to take the right arm across the chest here and then you can draw it in with either the left hand or the 
left forearm. And then we'll release and we'll go the other side. So drawing it across the chest. And just here, make sure when we're doing this pose that the, the elbow is lifted, that it's not all the way down here. You want to have the elbow lifted up high enough. And then we release the left arm. So another one for, it's very similar to the one we just did. We're gonna call, it's called the eagle arms. So we'll take the arms out to the side like a cactus. So the elbows are bent, forearms coming straight up from the elbows. And then now here, you're gonna cross them over and you're gonna cross your right arm, your right elbow on top of your left elbow. So now here, the back of the hands are facing each other, bring the right arm a little bit forward, if you can. Then you're gonna turn the hand and see, can you make a connection between the two hands? And then bringing the elbows up to shoulder height here. So try to relax around the neck, so keep the neck nice and long. Now here in this position, we're gonna press the elbows in towards each other we're going to press the hands in towards each other. And then we'll release, take the arms out wide, bring them up to cactus. And then we're going to go the other way. So this time it's the left elbow on top. Palms of the, or the backs of the hands are facing each other. Bring the left hand forward. See, so can you turn it around somewhat and make a connection with the right hand? And then again, taking the elbows up to shoulder height. Press the hands into each other, press the elbows into each other. So here you might feel this pose just in that space between the shoulder blades. And then releasing, releasing down. So here it's nice, nice now to just interlace the hands behind you. And then on an inhale, just begin to lift the hands away from you. Keep the chest open, but keep the core engaged. So we don't want to be overarching into the lower back. So keep the core strong and then begin to lift the hands away from you. So broadening across the chest. I'm just getting into the front of the shoulders. And then we'll release the hands down. Some neck stretches, so just lowering the left ear towards the left shoulder. And here, maybe a tiny bit of pressure with your hand. So just guiding the head down. Just looking for the length here on the right side of the neck. And then we'll go the other way. So it's the right ear towards the right shoulder. And then looking for the length on the left side of the neck. So don't force it here. We don't want to create any injuries. And then we bring the head back up to the center. Lower the chin down towards the chest. And you can just guide the head down with the hands gently. And then bringing the head back up lifting up towards the ceiling. So just feeling the length all across the front of the throat. Good, and then bring the head back towards the center. So we're gonna make our way down onto the mat, but to do that, we're gonna come into what we call a forward fold. So you're gonna take your arms up as you breathe in, and then you're gonna breathe out. Arms come out to the side, and we begin to lower over the body. So as you come down here, make sure the core is engaged. Relax the head and the neck. Breathe in, you're gonna take your hands to the shins. See, so can you lengthen your spine? So see, so can you flatten the back here? And then exhale, keeping this as flat as you can, come into your forward fold again. So if you need to bend the knees, no problem, go ahead. And then we'll take the hands onto the floor. You're going to take the feet and the knees 
down and you're going to lower the whole way down onto the floor. So I have another nice little uh, pose for to get into the front of the shoulders here. So it's like a little pec stretch. So we're going to begin by, uh, so you're lying on your tummy. You can just rest down, support your head with your right hand beneath the forehead. Then we're going to take the left arm, like cactus arms, like we were doing a moment ago. You're going to bring the elbow slightly ahead of the shoulder. So it's going to be a little bit higher than the shoulder. The hand is coming straight out from the elbow. And then you're going to take your left or sorry, your right hand out to the side. And you're going to begin to press into that right hand and start to peel the right side of your body off the floor. And here you might start to feel it on the front of that left shoulder. The left side of the chest also. And then exhaling, lowering back down. We're going to take the right arm this time. So the right elbow slightly ahead of the shoulder. Hand is coming straight out from the elbow, the forearm to the hand. Left hand on the floor. Press that left hand into the floor. Begin to peel the body away from the floor. And then exhale, releasing down. So come on to resting the chin on the floor. The arms are by the sides. We'll start with the palms of the hands up towards the ceiling. Let's bring the shoulders, lift the arms and the shoulders and bring them back towards the back body. So see, can you feel your shoulder blades squeezing towards each other? Now on your next inhale, we're going to see, can we lift the legs also and come into a mini back bend. So we call this pose locust pose. So here we got to be careful that we don't dump into the lower back. So you got to think about lengthening that lower back. So you engage the glutes and you think of your tailbone lowering down towards the heels. Keep drawing back, back on the shoulders. Keep the collarbones nice and broad. And then as you breathe out, you release down. Just take a moment here. So if you'd like to repeat that a few times, you can. But we're going to come into a little twist for the body now. So it's seated twist. Actually, I'll turn this way. So we'll have the left leg outstretched. The right knee is bent and we're going to cross it over to keep the left toes flexed up towards the ceiling. Make sure the full right foot is connected to the floor. You're going to take your right hand behind you and you breathe in. You sit up tall, breathe out. You're twisting your torso to the right. So you can either hug that right knee in there or some of you might be very open and flexible. So you take your elbow to the outside of that right knee. Maybe perhaps turning your head to look over your right shoulder. And then exhale, undo the twist and we'll go the other way. So as the right foot is flexed, you bend the knee of the left leg and you take the left foot across. So taking your left hand behind you and then sit up tall on the inhale. And then as you exhale, twisting to your left. And then maybe taking your head to look over your left shoulder. Remember here to keep the right foot flexed, right toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, undo the twist. So let's come down onto the back. And as we're in this position here, we're going to come into our figure of four pose. So it's a great one for getting into the glutes and the hips. We can, these areas can get very tight, especially after matches. So 
I'm going to take the ankle, the right ankle, just above the left knee. We flex the right foot. And on your next inhale, you can lift that left leg. Begin drawing that left thigh towards you. Here, it's important to keep that right foot flexed. You can support the left leg by interlacing the fingers behind the left thigh, or maybe just placing the hands on the right leg. And then releasing down, changing over. So the left ankle just above the right knee, flex the left foot and then drawing the right thigh up towards you. This stretch was so important. Helps keep my and then lowering that right foot down, lower the left foot down. So we need a pose now to really get into the hamstrings. So you're gonna take your strap, you're gonna bend that right knee, take the strap around the ball of the right foot, you're gonna straighten that leg. So whether it comes straight up towards the ceiling or it's back here or back here, no problem. Just walk your hands up the strap as best you can, take your shoulders back towards the floor and slide that left leg out away from you. Flex that left leg, the left foot. And then here we'll just work with the breath for a couple of goes. See, can you soften a little bit more that hamstring muscle? Maybe some of you are feeling it in the calf also. See, can you soften? As you breathe out, every time you breathe out, can you just allow a sense of releasing coming to that, to come to that muscle. Now here, we're going to take both ends of the strap into the right hand, place your hand just at the front of the left hip, and you're going to begin to allow that right leg to slide out or to fall out <laughs> to the right you can begin to slide your hand down the strap rest your right elbow on the floor here just to support so you can support the leg now keep your left hand just at the front of that left hip and then see can you coax your tummy back towards the center so it might have just the whole the whole there's a, a lot of weight going to the right taking the body with you. So try and see, can you engage the core to bring your body back to the left, towards the left, I should say. And then we'll bring that right leg back up and we bend the left leg, bend the right knee here, undo the strap. Let's go the other way. So we'll place the strap around the ball or around the actually the arch of the left foot. So you can straighten that left leg, walk your hands up the strap to where they're nice and straight. The strap is taut, bring the shoulders back onto the mat and then we'll slide the right leg away. And then again, just working with the pose here, with the breath, see, can you soften a little bit more into the back of those, into the hamstrings, into the back of the left leg. And then we take both ends of the strap. I'm going to crash into the wall here. <laughs> so we'll allow that. So take your right hand to the front of the right hip. And then just allowing that left leg to fall out to the side. Slide your hand down the strap so you can rest your elbow on the floor. Then bring the tummy, the abdominal muscles, engage them and try to bring the body back to towards the right. The right leg that's outstretched, keep it flexed. On your next inhale, bringing the leg back up towards the ceiling, bend the left leg, undo the strap, 
and you can bend the right knee. Take your strap out to the side. So here we just cross the legs and just begin to circle the right foot, the right ankle. And some, actually, as you're doing that, let's do the wrists also. Change direction. It's important to keep the ankles and the wrists mobile. Let's change feet. So you're going to do the left ankle. You might as well do the wrists again. And then go the other direction. So they say if you can keep your wrists and your ankles mobile, the wrists will help the flexibility in the shoulders and then the ankles will help the flexibility in the hips. So it's always a good idea to do a couple of these circles every day. Draw the knees in towards the chest. Take a breath here. And then just rock from side to side. And then lower the feet down. Turn to your side. Come to sitting up. So well done. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it.